Continuing the teardown of the Yamaha MT8X multi-track cassette recorder, I'm going to start taking apart this upper section that's got the mixer board and then shuttle controls, display, that kind of thing in it. Um, I'm going to start by taking apart this side. As I said earlier in this teardown, sometimes when I make these videos it's maybe third or fourth time I've dealt with a particular unit, but this is the first MT8X that I've got, so there may be a certain amount of confusion and missteps. So there's a little brass narrow ferrule screw with a cable tidy in the top left corner of this metal plate which I assume is shielding and protecting the display unit. I'm going to remove one, two, three, four screws here, see if that gives me access. I'm not suggesting that if you're going to fix one of these that you've got to take everything apart the way that I'm doing. I'm just showing you how to access everything because you know you never know what you might need to replace, desolder, reflow. I think one of the things that's intimidating about working on these is just the logistics of getting them apart and worrying you, that you won't know what cable goes where. So at least with these videos then you'll have some idea of where everything goes, something to refer to if you get lost. Right, so that's given me access to the display over um, the cable running from it. So that's all tangled up with some other cables. I think that I must have unscrewed that from the lower part of the case. There's a little cable tidy here. And one at the side of this board here. So it's got two cables coming from it ending in a 5 pin and a 4 pin header. Next one down, so like we've got 5 screws here to be removed. Uh, notice that when I removed that, I don't know if I remember to say, there was a little tab here so that will be the way that the shielding behind the display and this piece of metal shielding are connected to each other. Generally speaking anything that's like a heat sink shielding that should all be connected somehow to common ground in the circuit. So a system of tabs and ring connectors like this is usually how it's achieved in such things. We saw a lot of these screws in the earlier part of the video maybe centimeter, 15 millimeters long, wide gap between the ferrules I guess that's about a three millimeter diameter on the shaft, including the ferrule itself. It's accepting a sort of standard size wood screws around your house DIY size of Phillips head screwdriver. Um, so far I haven't had to use any other size of screwdriver on this project, which is nice because some units, you know, you're fiddling about with 15 kinds of screw and three different sizes of screwdriver. Okay, so yeah, this is... Shielding. I need to be careful there because there's. You can see there's a certain amount of foam rot there. It's not too bad. I'm going to crumble most of that away though because we don't really want the debris from that dried up decomposing foam getting into these faders. I mean, these faders are already looking pretty dirty, so I need to give them a good clean. Um, but what just fell off there is there seems to be an extra sort of plastic retainer thing here so that the fader knobs that go on there don't go too far down. Maybe take those off now and put them in the little plastic container where I'm cleaning all the knobs and so on. Those are manky. Probably get in there with some Q-tip, you know, squash it at the end of a Q-tip with a pair of pliers, a bit of contact cleaner in there, follow up with some lubricant. Um, if you want to see that process in detail, go to the Cleaning Multi-Trackers playlist that's on my YouTube channel homepage. You know, that was sitting like that basically. You're getting electrical continuity between this shielding and that shielding behind the VU via that tab. Looks like this is plugging into two places here. I haven't exactly established what the difference is between these two boards. Um, but the upper one of these, that came out really easily. So a little two pin one down in the lower of these two boards and what's that, eight pins? Yeah, eight pin one at the top. And this board down here has got all the tactile switches for, you know, play, stop, rewind, etc, etc. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws to remove there. Right, with all the screws out, up that comes. 
These tactile switches are a bit iffy, they're responding sometimes and not others. Probably that's just dirt, like maybe I could get away with just blowing some compressed air through there with some contact cleaner. Repeat that process a few times, agitate them, and that's gonna get enough gunk off the conductor surfaces inside. But I mean, these are very cheap parts, you know, they're pennies each. So if you can be arsed to desolder all these, which I've told the owner of this machine I will do, then that's probably better. So again, check my cleaning playlist if you want to see the process I'm just describing there uh, performed in detail. I mean, it's on a Tascam 244 board, but really it's the same process. There's fewer of these tactile switches and they're larger on that unit, but it's, it's basically the same thing. And from there you could lift out these plastic button arrays and you see they've got these little double pin places for these. These things are meant to direct the light from the LEDs. So you could lift them out if you want to give this case a really good clean. If any of these are broken and you want to fix them then have a look at my Mending Plastics playlist. Now, let's have a look at the door mechanism while we're here. So earlier I found a broken bit of the door. So I'm going to be spin welding that on. Again, check my mending plastics playlist that includes a video about doing exactly that repair, but on a, I think it's a 414 door that I demonstrate it on. This looks nice and simple actually, just one screw and one spring that creates the mechanism which stops the door from just falling shut when you open it. So yeah, this little spring's going to go down the way. Presumably, if this was fixed then that would it's going past that spring there and that's what creates the you know it's shut it go past this bump that's it open and so you have to apply some force to get around the corner of that spring and see i just taped the door shut with masking tape so it wasn't flopping around when i was moving this around there's some malleability in the plastic on these hinges so if i just push that in come out so yeah like it's got a bit of give to it, and um, that little pin there is going into um, a little hole. You probably can't see because of the light, but there is a hole in this little strut sticking out of the case there. Alright, moving on to this side. So, all these cables are held together with two zip ties. Don't cut these if you don't have more spare to replace them, but um, I'm going to cut them. Make it a little bit easier to see what's going where. You can see that this bit of shielding is going to one of the ring connectors that was going into one of the metal plates in the earlier part of the video. Like a lot of these ring connectors were all kind of converging on this metal plate to create the common ground. I suppose you can think of like ground almost like grey water drainage in a house. Like all the crap you don't want, buzz coming from the PSU and all that, and it all needs to go down the drain. So if all these aren't connected to each other, all the drains don't meet up, then you can end up with grey water in your shower or in the food that you're going to boil your rice with. Uh, <laughs> that's probably a really specious analogy, but it will give you something close to a gist. Put a screw here that's holding that in place. So... That's the same as the ones that were holding the two halves of the case together. And this is of interest to me here because right, earlier on when I was deconstructing the lower part I found this rattling around, some sort of spacer. It looks like this might be another one here. Yeah, it is. Maybe this was meant to go on there and there. But I mean the other thing that makes me wonder is say with this one here is that the right way around, or should that plastic go underneath there to make sure that there's like a physical space between this shielding and the board below? I mean, we've got this non-conductor surface on there, so it shouldn't be shorting anything out. I suppose really what I'm saying is when you get to this bit of your build and you're deconstructing it, take note of where these are. If it looks like yours has never been opened since it left the factory and the order in which these are all going together is different than what I've shown, then go with the order that you found rather than what I'm seeing because I've got evidence here that someone else has already been in here and they might have built it wrong. Anyway, that shielding now seems to be separate. Got a little plastic clip here. Right, so this is one of these ones that's meant to splay when you put this pin in. 
Now that looks like that was meant to go, push that through that hole and into that hole and then that pin down. So that's stopping that from flapping about. Okay, so what's this? Meter, line amp, monitor, E slash D control. Can't think off the top of my head what E slash D, what the acronym is for. But noise reduction decode. So this has got DBX, the meter, logic and a few other things on it. Okay, is that going to come away or is it attached? Right. See those two little plastic clips here? So I'm going to want to pinch those. There. All right, so these pull out down here. Flip that up. You can see that more clearly. These little spacers. So when you push them through the hole, then these splay bits pop out so they don't come away easily. You just pinch them in with a pair of pliers to get that up. Let's disconnect this end. Yeah, they do. Okay. All right, so that's that board completely separate. That's nasty. I didn't realize that was there. See how there's, um, I mean, I haven't done it a huge amount of damage or anything. One pin's slightly bent, but they've got these kind of connectors with this four pins each that are passing through to holes here. So, I mean, I kind of tipped it that way, which isn't good for the pins. You obviously need to put that straight down so those pins go straight into those holes. Looks like there was a spacer there for that screw. Now, oh, yeah, there were there were two of them. See, I heard something rattling around. I didn't notice another spacer as I was taking that out. Yeah, this is going to be fiddly to put back because basically we've got to have those lined up perfectly, get those pins lined up perfectly and find a way to reattach all those cables before we put these things back in it must be the white plastic is on top and you know the the shieldings in this layer here but uh yeah that i anticipate that being a fiddly job to put back on so these are going to be our mixer boards i think in order to get what else is i heard something else rattling around there's another one of those clips i'm not exactly sure where that was meant to have gone Remember I was looking around, I was like, oh no, there's no screw for that. I think that was meant to go there, so there's maybe another plastic clip there. Anyway, I was saying, um, I think we're going to have to remove this plate at the back. When I was trying to figure out how to open the case, I already took out four of these screws. hope this is in focus, but they're quite an unusual type. Got this wide, wide, I think that's called a shank, smooth part on the screw. There's one, two, three, four, like basically in the corner. So I've, I've left one in there in the center, so I'll take that out just now. I noticed that when I was taking out the top right corner, I had a washer like that. So if you have one of those, that's where it goes, this top right corner. I'm pointing at now. I'll take that panel out. I'm gonna pause the camera and figure this out. I'm not exactly sure how this comes apart. Okay, uh, we've got some more missing screws here, like, I'm pretty sure I didn't remove that one. Unless these are through, I'll need to establish that. I mean, there's a hole with a picture of a screw here and here that don't have those in there. Um, there's recesses for screws there. Yeah, they, those must be missing screws. There's no pass-through holes to, you know, I was just wondering if those are holes to keep the two halves of the case together, but I don't think they are. Likewise there, there's one missing. So it's looked like we've got six holes like that passing through the board. I think there must be some sort of metal chassis in the far side to keep everything rigid, of which this is part. So if I unscrew the remaining screws like that, and these ones along here, that one there, then this is all gonna come out and we're gonna find some shielding and a metal plate in the far side. That's a sort of build style I've seen in um, 424 Mark II is one example, but a few different units. Yeah, let's unscrew those and see if I'm right. All standard size screws by the looks of it. And there's a lot of cables in this. It has to be, it's an 8-track machine, it's complicated, but so far I've been quite pleased with the access on this unit. But, you know, there's benefits to having the mix of this hard screwed down, but it's not great to get out for cleaning that you have to do all this disassembly just to squirt some contact cleaner and some pots. But hey ho, you can't have everything, I guess. You know, it's not like the 488 or 488 Mark II were particularly easy to take apart. Those screws are all pretty much the same. I mean, some of them have got a kind of flathead, some are a bit more domed, but the um, the shaft is the same diameter, same length, same spacing between the ferrules. 
Anything else still attached? It feels like something's still attached. That was all the screws removed. A couple of these buttons were just catching on the plastic case slightly, so I guess push those all down and it'll come out more easily. So uh, we've got some more of these LED magnifier plastic inserts. They're held down with a little plastic clip that doesn't look like it's removable. So I guess at that point we're done with this case. Got this thing here for access to the magnetic head. So I suppose if we're going to be complete, then we could remove those little countersunk screws. They're the first of that kind that we've seen. And that will... Oh no, it doesn't even really give you access. I wouldn't bother to remove that. It's just a fancy looking plate to look all bling. I mean, I'll leave that off in case I put some uh, Windex or something on here to clean this up. I don't want that getting onto this metal surface, but that's all that is. But yeah, I mean, that that's as much access as you're gonna get for cleaning of the plastic. What else is attached to the shielding? Anything? Nope. And that shielding's gonna come off. Again, this sort of foam, you can see it's kind of crumbling. I suppose it is still doing sort of a job of stopping dust getting in, but then crumbly crap like that, that's worse for getting in your faders than the, the dust itself. Um, rubber or fabric, which are the materials that I've seen used in Tascam, would be a better choice. This is foam deteriorates with age, and that's called foam rot. So that's not good. I'll probably scrape most of that off. And yeah, so most of the debris on these faders is foam that was meant to protect them rather than dust itself. Um, but there, yeah, there's a fair amount of dust in this. This is pretty manky. Show you this. Big old lumps of lint. Not much actual oxidation. Oxidation? I always say that word wrong. So I don't think it's actually corroded. It's just a bit filthy. Check my cleaning multi-trackers playlist on my channel for details about it but basically I'm going to be going through this with contact cleaner compressed air following up with uh, deoxid fader lube I find that that works just fine on pots quite stiffly connected to the switches these caps so I'll just leave them on so I thought this was maybe all one solid plate it isn't you can see there's one two three four five nuts that screw directly onto these pots if you needed to remove that reinforcing plate there or there it's, it's attaching the same way it's nuts onto the pots is that going to prevent me from cleaning those maybe a little bit yeah i probably will need to take those off i won't show you the whole thing but if you don't have a socket set, you can just grab and loosen them off with needle nose pliers. If you've got a socket set, I'm not sure this is the right size. That's a bit big. Imagining that was the right size and that's a little bit more convenient to do it that way. Imagining you needed to solder something underneath here. You can see there's another one of these connectors where there's basically pins going all the way through holes. You would need to be careful about that, but if you needed access to that, then basically you're going to have to remove all of these screws. They're going into the plastic housing of the RCA sockets and then you're going to have to kind of remove these. You just pull them off with pliers and then when you put them back on, they sort of slide into slots on the quarter inch jacks. Right, I'm shooting this out of sequence so I haven't actually dealt with the transport yet so I'll go and film that just now but I'm assuming that this is going to be the end of the teardown. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hope to see you again soon.